Teaching an online course requires you to pay attention to a lot of details. In this presentation, the focus is primarily on pre-course setup and post-course wrap-up. Obviously, instructors must provide subject matter expertise to their students. In face-to-face -face classes, instructors do that through lectures, providing feedback, and answering questions. In the BBST online classes, the lectures are provided for you, but you must still field questions and provide feedback. In the instructor's course, we don't focus on developing subject matter expertise. You do that by your own experience or by taking and passing the courses before serving as an instructor. Communicating in the online classroom is a bit different than it is in a face-to-face -face class. Tone of voice voice and use of humor requires special consideration. An online instructor starts managing the learning environment before the course begins. Pre-course setup for online classes is more crucial than it is for face-to-face -face classes. In face-to-face -face classes, an instructor can make a mid-course correction or improvise a workaround relatively easily. That is much more difficult in an online class where student after student trips over the same simple errors or oversights in the course. A smooth start to the course is vital to making a good first impression on students and setting the tone for the class. Taking the time to check, double check, and even triple check the course before the official start date is a worthwhile use of your time. In the United States, we have a cliche that says no job is finished until the paperwork is done. That's true with these online courses too. The instructor is responsible for notifying students of final course outcomes and passing along the results to the people who keep the records. Wrapping up the course properly gives a sense of closure to students and keeps the institutions where you're teaching satisfied that you can be counted on to do the appropriate paperwork. Another challenge in teaching online is in making your presence known to students. That is easy in a face-to-face -face class, but a bit trickier to do well in an online class. Students need to know that their instructor is engaged in the class and paying attention to what is happening. And, an instructor's ability to do that is complicated by the fact that the students can't actually see what the instructor is doing. Most courses have these setup tasks in common. Be sure to check the instructor's manual for your specific course to make sure you take care of all course tasks. Use the pre-course checklist as you prepare to begin each section. If you are working with co-instructors, you will find it helpful to have a mailing group for discussions to take place outside of the online classroom. Sure, your email client probably allows you to set up a group, but it probably doesn't allow you to share that group with your other co-instructors. Over the past several years working with the Association for Software Testing, we found Yahoo groups to be very useful for this. We create a private group for each class section, and all members of the group can send messages to everyone else in the group. Once the course is over, the group is dormant and we create a new group for the next class. Although we use Yahoo Groups for this task, you could use Google Groups or a variety of other similar services. The point is to create a convenient way for co-instructors to communicate with each other without the bother and mess of reply to all. Inevitably, someone is left out. Dividing and tracking the instructor tasks can be time consuming. We've found that a spreadsheet in Google Documents helps the instructors stay organized. We'll take a closer look at that document in a moment. If you're teaching for AST or a BBST certificate program, the course policies are probably well established and don't require much from you. If you are determining your own course policies, take a look at Chapter 2 in the Green Instructor's Manual for Guidance. I've already told you, and you might remember from your own experience in the BBST courses, how useful the course tasks lists are for students who need to keep track of their assignments and deadlines. Be sure to update and post the task list for your course section. Instructor introductions and a welcome message to students are also important aspects of starting a course. We'll come back to those when we talk more about communicating in the online classroom. Throughout the course, the pattern of instructor communications can set the rhythm. Coordinate with the other instructors in your team to determine who will complete each task. Generally speaking, you should plan to post class-wide feedback about twice a week. At the beginning of the week, set student expectations and emphasize important points in a post that previews the coming week. At the end of each week, post feedback on the class performance as a whole. Use the Fieldstones project if you need inspiration to craft these feedback posts. You'll find detailed feedback and explanations to common problems that you can modify and reuse in the courses you teach. If you're a little unclear about a specific assignment or activity, you may find additional insight by reviewing the relevant Fieldstones. Throughout your courses, review your own writing for students. We are continuing to develop our collection of Fieldstones and we welcome your contributions. Once you are a certified instructor, you can visit the BBST Instructors Forums and post your submissions there for others to review and polish. You'll also have access to the full collection of Fieldstones. During this instructor's course, you'll use a subset of Fieldstones posted in the wiki area of Moodle. The instructor's manual for each course has a chart of tasks for each week. Experienced instructors will be able to remind themselves at a glance what needs to be done. 
Less experienced instructors can use the chart as an overview of tasks for the week and refer to more detailed instructions following the chart. The more detailed set of instructions tell you how to prepare for an assignment. It describes the assignment and the desired outcomes. It lists the tools you and your students will use to complete the lessons. It reminds you of core readings associated with the lessons. And it provides tips about what you might include in your communications with the students for the week. This screenshot shows part of a master task list that lead instructors can duplicate for each section of a course. A lot of instructor teams set up a web shareable document of tasks that must be completed throughout the course. We have a master document with a field to enter the start date for the course, and the spreadsheet will automatically populate the deadlines. Instructors and co-instructors choose tasks they will complete and mark them done after completion. I know this image is too small for you to read the details, but don't worry about that. One of your assignments in this course will give you the chance to take a closer look at the document. As you prepare to teach a course, you should give the task list a quick review to make sure all tasks are on it. Enter the starting date for course sections, and the rest of the timeline automatically populates throughout the document. Depending on the circumstances of a particular class, the lead instructor can assign tasks or ask co-instructors to sign up for tasks. Setting up a Google Doc for sharing is simple. Wrapping up the course is easier than you might expect. We'll talk about grading student performance more a little later. However, we would like you to track what happened with each student in the course. Check with your specific institution about what kind of information you should turn in for each student at the end of the class. For AST courses, you'll get a list of students at the start of the course. The course administrator will probably post your list of students on the Google course task list. Throughout the course, you should note students who dropped the course, those who never started the class, those who passed, and those who did not complete. For AST courses, there are seven possible outcomes for the end of a class. A complete is noted when a student successfully completes the class. A non-complete is for the student who has finished the course but, in the judgment of the instructors, is not ready to continue with future courses. A no-show is assigned when a student signed up for the class but never participated nor sent any correspondence to the instructor. If a student does this too often, they're not permitted to register for future classes for a period of time. Dropped status is assigned to a student who voluntarily drops in the middle of the course. The student notifies the instructors they will be dropping and usually provides an explanation. With busy professionals, this happens frequently. Excuse status is assigned to students who are dropped by the instructor, almost always for non-participation. Students can be barred from future AST courses for extreme disruptive actions. Cheating and or plagiarism are the most likely reasons for barring someone from future classes, but other major problems might rise to that level too. Audited status is reserved for students who retook a class for one reason or another. Please be sure to note an appropriate outcome for each student who starts your class and return the completed list to the BBST course administrator as soon as the course wraps up.